videos in this series are not meant to represent my first playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV. I have completed all main scenario quests, so I cannot promise you genuine reactions to certain cutscenes, but at the same time, I still might get emotional during certain moments in the game. With that said, I do hope to provide a decent experience for everyone, so thank you for tuning in. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Uh, doing something a bit different, or rather pretty, pretty quick. Might tie this in with the main story stuff, I might not. But essentially what I'm going to show you guys is a bit of side content that you can unlock when you hit around level... I think around either your mid-20s or early 30s. This side quest unlocks from this character right here. You can find him over in Gridania. Head over to the Adventurers Guild down here. Talk to him to start the quest line, the house that dealt that uh, death built. If you're poking around looking for work, you must be an adventurer too, am I right? You won't find much here, I'm, I'm afraid. Seems the only thing people talk about these days is that nasty bit of business down near Isamhar. Surely you've heard the stories of a strange portal suddenly appearing in the ruins down there? I have not. Hey, don't give me that look. I'm only telling you what I overheard from the whalers. They say on the other end of it is some sort of labyrinth. The thing is, every time they go down there to map the place out, nothing is the same. A mystery if I've ever heard one. Frankly, I'm more than happy to let it stay a mystery. Strange apparitions, booby trapped corridors, going down there is nothing short of suicide. Still, the prospect of a treasure is awful tempting. <laughs> Don't take my word for it though. Head down to Isamhar and you can hear it straight from the Chocobo's mouth. Alright, so from there he's going to send you over to speak with the uh, expeditionary team over in South Shroud. Specifically, you want to head over to... Quarry Mill. If you don't have this Ethernet unlock, you'll just have to walk there. But if you do, just teleport over. And then you just walk the rest of the way. Luckily for me, I have a mount. Granted, my mount speed isn't going to be all that fast, at least not yet. As you level up, your mount speed in certain areas will increase, and you will also have the option to fly later, later on. But for the time being, we're going to ride on over to our location, which is on the other side, right here. Attack me. Okay. He's gone. Or it's gone, rather. I'm sorry, but I must insist that you... Oh, an adventure. And a rather seasoned-looking one besides. On the off chance you're not simply here to go out, perhaps you can lend us a hand? You see, despite the fervent prost prostinations of those duskwites over there, we cannot per permit civilians within the ruins at this time. Capable men and women, like you, on the other hand, are more than welcome. That is, if you've got the stones for it. Pray seek out the others stationed at Quarry Mill. They can appraise you of the details. Alright, so we're heading back to Quarry Mill. We can just run back there. It's fine. I'm not that. Fuck it. We're teleport back. It's fine. I have enough skill for it. Every time you teleport, by the way, I should have mentioned this way in the beginning of the game. Each time you teleport, it does cost a couple hundred gil, which is fine, because you're going to be earning gil as you're turning in quests and killing stuff anyway, so it's fine. Well met, adventurer. 
I take it you have come to learn more of the recent happenings at ICMR. The site of in is of interest owing to the Galmoran ruins. Galmora being an underground city which predates Gridania, in case you were unaware. Any road, a few days passed, we received reports from several anthro- Holy fuck. That word. Hold on, give me a minute. Any road, a few days passed, we received reports from several anthropogeographers that a magical gateway of some sort had appeared in the ruins and that all manner of creatures were coming and going through it. My men and I were among the first to examine it and, well, it's hard to explain. We crossed the threshold into a set of corridors we'd never seen before, and then suddenly each and every one of us was filled with an inexplicable sense of dread. It was all I could do to take even a single step. According to E. Unakator, who, accom who accompanied us, the ruins are warded with powerful magics that sap the spirits and ether of all who enter, rendering them easy prey for the creatures within. Thankfully, he managed to devise a solution. Ether pool arms and armor, which safeguard, the channel, which safeguard and channel the wielder's energies, that they might withstand the ruins' magics. Unfortunately, it does little to, to prevent us from losing our way. Though it's beggar's belief, every time we have dared to venture into the ruins, we have found the path to be changed. We suspect this too may be the work of an unfathomably powerful mage. Needless to say, something strange is afoot, and traditional tactics are not like to suffice. Even experienced adventurers will need to proceed with caution. In any event, if you believe you have what it takes to brave the ruins and discover what secrets lies in its depths, you need but say the word. And with that, we have unlocked Palace of the Dead. You now have access to the Palace of the Dead. You may enter solo or in a party of up to four players. When speaking with the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain, you will be given the option to enter with, the, with either a fixed party or a matched party via the matching system. Players will start at level one. Sorry. <clears throat> Players will start at level 1 regardless of their current class or job level. Furthermore, only Ether Pool Arms and Ether Pool Armor may be used when inside the Palace of the Dead. Each floor of the Palace of the Dead is randomly generated, including the placement of enemies, treasure coffers, and traps. Further details can be had by speaking with the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain. So, essentially, the best way I can describe what Palace of the Dead is. Uh, if you played, let's say, hmm, Binding, Binding of Isaac, I think that's a good example to use. If you've played Binding of Isaac before, pretty much the layout each time you go in is going to be the, it, it's not, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be different each time you go in. Enemies are going to be different each time you go in. Traps will be different each time you go in. Uh, I will give you guys a quick example as to what Palace of the Dead is. And holy shit, the wait time for this thing is 13 minutes. Oh, no, it went down to five minutes. Hopefully, I'm not waiting that long. In the meantime, while we are waiting, we can actually go ahead and start our uh, story stuff over in uh, Little Solace last video we did learn a little bit about the silks we were trying to give them a letter from the leader of gridania kane senna but something seems to have the silks on edge because they do not want to help me right now so you know that sucks so we got to go ahead and earn their trust i guess back or just continue to earn their trust and see what it is they can tell us what they can what we can do to help them most likely we're going to be helping them out with a lot of issues before we can actually get to what we need to do which in this case make sure that they're not trying to summon their primal remove that's what has uh gridania kind of nervous right now while the sylphs are a beast tribe they're a peaceful be uh, beast tribe they don't really go out and kill people and stuff like that. Although their pranks do tend to annoy the locals. So other than that, they're a playful bunch.
All right, Ida. What's the what's the plan? Say, Jay, are you in the mood for dancing? That's right, dancing. You went through all that trouble to learn the Sylph's traditional greeting, but you greeted hardly any of them. Why, if I were a Sylph, I'd be beside myself with the delight to see an adventurer expressing an interest in my culture. Me? Of course, I'd be happy to join. Ow, ow, there go, the, there go those bloody cram, leg cramps of mine acting up again. The lies! Fine, I'll do it myself. Walking one would be a would be a friend to these ones. This one is overjoyed, but this one keeps the ways of weaving a secret. Even if walking one learned the secret, walking one would not weave in the same way. All right, so you're a seamstress. All right, you go ahead, keep your secrets. Oh, I did not mean to use that skill. Go ahead and dance for you. Ah, walking one is a friend to those to these ones. Friendly like friendly like gracious elder one of Forest City. Ah, she's talking about Kane Sen. Knows how to dance into these ones' hearts. Alright, so you're good. Ooh, walking one knows Jolly Dance. Jolly Dance fills this one with good cheer. Let these two be friends. All right, so that seems to work. Jay, would you like to hear the good news or the better news? The good news is that your lovely dancing has brought smiles and high spirits to all of Little Solace. The better news? Why, I've thoroughly recovered from those accursed leg cramps. Onward to the next adventure. Oh, Ida. All right, Papa Lima, what do you got for me? Jay, as an adventurer, you're no stranger to helping distressed folk, I'd wager. Tales of good deeds are quick to spread. The adventurer who comes to the aid of the local populace can go from stranger to hero overnight. No doubt you see what I'm getting at. The Sylphs who make their home in Little Solace do so have, having been driven from their woodland home. Surely they have their fair share of troubles. Seek out and seek out troubled selves and see what might be done to ease their worries. A sound plan, would you would you not say? That said, the selves are not known to share their worries with outsiders. You would be better off inquiring with Hera Emedia of the Gridanians who reside here. She is most likely to be privy to the selves' troubles. And did I just join a? Holy shit! Yeah, just part of a. All right, fine. We're here. You might as well do this really quick. Heat back. Heat back. Oh. Couldn't attack the monkey, but I could keep attacking these guys. I'm really not going to get much experience points from moving this fate, only because, well, I'm level fucking 31. So it's not going to give me much, but I'll do it. Might get in the way of my story questing anyway, so let me just clear this out now. And of course, still a good way to pass time until my uh, place in line for party of, for Palace of the Dead is, you know, ready.
almost done. Silph's most likely need help with their issues. Let's get on it, shall we? Praise be to the elementals. I cannot express how happy I am to see an adventurer with a truly gentle heart. The Silphs of Little Solace are sorely in need of aid. Pray hear me out. Alright, what's wrong? Being a temporary settlement, Little Solace wants for amenities, not least a stout set of defenses. Consequently, beasts from Mom's Round are free to wander in and terrorize the hapless residents. The Ziz Gorlins and Gallnats that roam these parts are especially troublesome, but slaying one of each should serve as a warning to the rest. Furthermore, perhaps you, sh you could gather three brownie bushes as well. They play an important role in, Sil in Silphic culture. I do not claim to know the details, and what with such feral beasts prowling the forest, they are not easily come by. When you are done with the deeds, seek out Kamuxia. He is slow to warm to outsiders, but your good intentions will not be lost on him. My own experiences seek to speak to this. Alright, so it looks like she's tried helping them, but at first it wasn't exactly, you know, working out for her, but eventually, you know, earned that particular self's trust. Alright, so. Mass genocide. Got it. So that's one. And these brownie bushes. Where the hell? Oh, okay. I think I see one right now. Dang, I might not be able to show you guys Palace of the Dead because the wait time is freaking long. I guess no one's really doing it anymore. You can do it by yourself, but holy crap, I will say this, Palace of the Dead is lengthy. In total, there are 200 floors. Every 10 floors, you will fight a boss. You can get through the first 10 floors on your own, I think, but as you progress, the enemies do get tougher, and it's going to be better that you actually have a group with you. That way, you can burn through the enemies quicker get to the floors a lot faster. And I believe there is actually a bit of a storyline as well, so... Oh, you know what? Boom. Yeah, I'm gonna withdraw my placements and Palace of the Dead. I will not be doing that dungeon just yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Soon, though. Soon. If anything, if I decide to level up any other classes and jobs, I'll use that to level them up a bit quicker than just doing, you know, any side quests or doing any of the, uh, guild leaves. Guild leaves are a good source of experience points for leveling up a new class, but we'll get into that when I'm actually ready to, um, make a new class. Or, yeah, not even make, just go out and choose a different one because you can always have one character that can play every class and job without having to make new characters which is honestly fantastic all right we got the brownie bushes we took out the enemies at least one of each enemy to serve as a warning to the others to not mess with little solace because little solace has fucking hitmen like me to take them out so Let's see if this changes things. Listen, I know you were mad before. Hear me out. Dancing one is still here. Dancing one can dance all night. This one's trust is not so easily earned. Hmm? Dancing one brings brownie bushes for this one? This one can die thread once more. This one is pleased. Dancing one kills bitey buzzy one? This one hates, hates, hates spidey buzzy ones. Dancing one is kind. Too kind. Many walking ones come to these ones abode, but few are friendly like the dancing one. Perhaps this one was wrong not to trust dancing one after all. The Now. 
This one asks Nancy One for forgiveness. These ones have many troubles since Walking Ones last came to our abode. This one must be careful. Always careful. But Dancing One does not like other Walking Ones. This one can trust Dancing One. This one would ask Dancing One for help. Strange Walking Ones with bodies of steel come to the home of these ones. Ooh. Garleans, Imperials. Interesting. This one's... This one thinks steel ones come from Empire. Where Empire goes, many living ones become dead ones. Trees fall and bushes burn. These ones' home is in danger. Danger! This one begs of Dancing One to help this one once more. To help this one no more. Sorry. Dancing One is friends with these ones and Walking Ones, yes? Dancing One must speak to these ones here and Walking Ones in Hut House and find out more. This one has bad feeling. This one fears Steel Ones are after something, but this one should speak no more. Go, Dancing One. This one depends on kindness of Dancing One. God, you speak the way you guys speak is so odd. All right, so let's go ahead and gather some intel. Strange Steel Walking Ones? Yes, this one has seen. Steel Walking Ones carry big boxes. Maybe Walking Ones hunt, maybe walking ones hunt for shiny treasure? This one likes treasure. I don't think they're looking for treasure. Alright. Who else we got? Oh. Way down here. Actually, what do I have in here? Oh, I don't have any Gissel Greens to summon my Chocobo. Well, that's unfortunate. Eh, I should be fine. Shush! Shush, this one says. Steel walking ones are scary like touched ones. This one hates scary, and scary ones have scary friends. Wait, touched ones. We'll probably get that covered soon. Alright. So, oh dear lord. Alright. You, what do you know? Men clad in strange armor? Why, now that you mention it, I did see some suspicious types of late. They were gathering deep in the forest. I simply assumed they were adventurers. Well, you assumed wrong, madam. You're very, very wrong. Alright, where are... Ah, there you are, Victor. Fearsome look types clad head to toe in steel, you say? Hmm, Imperial soldiers, no doubt. I couldn't tell you what they're plotting, but I'm sure it's nothing good. Alright, we got our info. But, oh, whoops, wrong way. Let's head back to Little Solus and deliver our report and see where we go from here. Should have purchased more Gissel Green so I can actually summon my Chocobo. I mean, technically I can, I can summon my Chocobo plus whatever other mounts I have. Granted, most of the mounts that I have currently are from when I was subscribed for like several years, as well as, you know, from one pre-order that I did for Endwalker. But I won't be taking those out. This one is happy to see Dancing One return. What did Dancing One learn? Well, they were Imperials. This one sees. Steel walking ones come from Empire. Carry boxes and go walking deep, deep through trees. As this one thought, steel walking ones are up to nasty, no good things. This one knows Forest well. Steel walking ones try to hide, but this one will find them. This one would borrow Dancing One's map. This one makes Mark right here. This is where Steel Ones hide. This one knows. Dancing One will go looking for Steel Ones, yes? Uh, yes. Yes, I will. And you, Mark? Oh, they're actually very close by. What the hell? And 
and yeah, boxes. Kill the spell cast to burst. Wow, get out of there. And easy. Granted, I am horribly overleveled for this story quest, but it's fine. Got the oh, quartermaster's log. All right, so definitely a book that I just grabbed that details what it is that they're looking for, what they're doing, and all that good stuff. Dancing one is back. This one breathes sigh of relief. This one was worried. Hmm. Dancing one found something? Yep, a list of supplies and material to be delivered to a certain Imperial stronghold. Dancing one found paper inside a box? This is a message from Empire? This one can read walking one's symbols. Message paper has names of food and rocks. Food and rocks were inside boxes, this one knows. But this one does not understand. Food and rocks mentioned all come from home of these ones. How do steel walking ones know? find them. Is there a sneaky one hiding behind this one's wings? Snooping one selling secrets to steal walking ones? This one fears for this one's home, but Dancing One has helped this one much today. Dancing One must promise to always be friend to these ones. I'll take the high potion, thank you very much. Helpful one arrives at a good time. This one needs helpful one's help. One of these ones named Claxio ventured outside a little solace al um, alone. Alone is unsafe. Help one must find Claxio. Claxio struck west after leaving the settlement. Hurry before Claxio ends up in the belly of a beastly one. And now this has turned into a rescue mission. Great. Alright, where'd your friend go? Oh, pretty close. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I'm probably pronouncing their names wrong. What? Walking One wants this one to return to Little Solus? Don't make this one laugh. This one is weary of uh, is weary of living with those who are not these ones. This one wants to be alone. These ones rely on Walking Ones for everything. No better than those ones that summoned the Primal One. Wait, what? S small wonder this one chose to leave. This one thought this is this a likely place to build a home, but then Meddling One arrived. Meddling? Really? Forces this one to go deeper into the forest. Meddling one is forbidden from following this one. Away with meddling one. Yes, I'm gonna have to not follow your instructions. I, I still gotta follow you. You know, make sure you don't freaking die. But, better relay the news back to Kamuxia. So, your friend does not want to come back. What? Claxio refuses to return to these ones and went deeper into the forest? B but this one saw a touched one lurking in the forest. Helpful one must hurry. Hurry and find Claxio. Helpful one should search for spools of thread on the forest floor. Those things will lead helpful one to Claxio. But hurry. Hurry before touched ones take Claxio away. I guess touched ones would be the ones that summoned Ramu. Alright. Okay, makes sense. Oh, hey, there's a another fate going on. This time it's of the escort variety. It's 50% done. Who's doing it? Another player, probably. But I'm not doing it, though.
so. There you are, but it seems like a battle is about to commence. Yeah, so you just need to come back home. Meddling One is back? This one told Meddling One to be gone. Tell Kamuxio that this one will never go back. Never. Oh. Touched ones? Touched ones should go away too. This one is a good one. Everyone should just leave this one alone. Be on guard, Jay. These sylphs have been tempered. Brought under the thrall of the primal Ramu. Akin to the Amaljo tempered by Ifrit, these sylphs exist only to serve their deity. They will not answer to words, only steal. I take no pleasure in this, but it must be done. Alright, let's do this. Reinforcements. Oh, get out the way! You, you don't want to get hit with the uh, Morbles bad breath, because that shit will inflict a ton of status ailments on you. None of them good. This one is... safe? This one was so scared. Claxio! This one has been worried. So very worried. Is Claxio unharmed? Still in possession of wits? Kamuxio? And Meddling One as well. Why are these two here? These two came to rescue Claxio. That Claxio is safe fills this one with joy. Kamuxio. Forgive this one. This one did not mean to run away from Little Solace. This one was just afraid. These ones who live at Little Solace were changing, becoming friendly with other ones. This one feared that these ones were forgetting who these ones are, like the touched ones did. But this one was wrong. This one can see that now. Meddling, uh, helpful one. This one is grateful. This one will return to Little Solace to be with Kamuxio and friendly ones. Well, that should see to that. What say we return to Little Solace as well? I, for one, could do with a nice hot thing. I mean, after getting hit several times by that Morble's breath, yeah, I, I'd probably want a bath too. But I dodged, so I'm fine. Alright, so let's head back to Little Solus. Uh, screw it. Let's pull out the mount. Alright. Almost there, guys. Almost there. The only reason I was so kind of obsessed with using my chocobo instead of these mounts is because your chocobo can actually fight with you as well when you're not mounted, which is fantastic. Just make sure you have Gus and Greens to summon them, that way they'll actually fight by your side, otherwise, well, you're out of luck. This 
This one thought Claxio was lost forever. Helpful one saved Claxio. Now these ones can be family again. This one has known many walking ones, even many kind walking ones. But helpful one is kindest and strongest of all. Helpful one is a hero to these ones. Helpful one will bring these ones and walking ones closer together. This one knows. This one would take helpful one to see elder one. But elder one is... Elder one is... Yes, what happened to your elder? Oh, god damn it. Don't tell me something happened to your elder. Alright, out with it. What happened? This one must ask kind one's forgiveness. This one made the promise to take kind one to see elder one, yes? But this one cannot. This one cannot because elder one is not here. Elder one is not anywhere. Elder one went into forest yesterday but has not come back. This one is worried. Elder One often goes into forests, but never, never for this long. Kind One will help. Kind One will help find Elder One. Yes. Near where Elder One disappeared is the home of a walking one named Buskaran. Buskaran may know what happens to Elder One. This one would talk to Buskaran, but walking ones do not always trust these ones. Would Kind One talk to Buskaran for this one? And Kind One comes from Gadania. Yes. In Gradania live many kind ones. Yes. This one begs, kind one. Please go to Gordani and ask fellow kind ones for help. And please hurry. These ones are not safe until Elder One returns. Oof. Oh, hey then. So, the only reason I wasn't brought up, the only reason I wasn't led over to the Elder sooner was because, shit, their Elder ain't even around. So we gotta go ahead and ask for help from Gridani and see if they can, you know, help us out with the search efforts. I gotta find a way to hide all these character names after, but I'll do that off screen. Well, if it isn't our intrepid ambassador, how fair your diplomatic efforts with the Silk Tribes? Their elders gone missing, you say? Why, if you were to end up in the hands of the, of the Tempered Ones, we'd have a crisis on our hands. You can assure the Silks that my sharpest-eyed serpents will be on the lookout night and day. No stone must be left unturned. I would ask you to call upon Gaia Malko at Bent Branch Meadows and deliver the message that the Wood Whalers are needed in the search effort. All right. Where are you? There you are. Hi, Gaia. A message from Commander Hulo, you say? The Silk Elder has vanished? Were we not, friend? The Wood Whalers have eyes under every leaf, behind every branch. If the Elder is anywhere in these forests, we shall find him. And finally, head over to Buskaran's Druthers. I forgot to buy. Ah, uh, fine. Let me double check. If, 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 where is? Is there not a merchant here? Hold up. Shop is ah. No, you sell armor and weapons. I need pistol greens. I'm gonna just take that out real quick. But I can't seem to... Oh. Nope, you're not that kind of merchant then. Alright, fine, whatever. Uh, wrong way.
Alright, nearly there. And we're here. Well met, adventurer. We have the finest grog and grub in this side of... Huh? Not here to fill your belly, then? Ah, hunger for news, is it? Aye, there's been talk of a sylph lurking hereabouts, but I couldn't rightly say if it be the elder you seek. Those woodland scamps all look alike. Wrote of painting one red and another one blue, most folk would struggle to tell two of them apart. If you've the time, mayhap you could stay a while and see what the gods have in store. You never know, you might even stumble across this sylph elder of yours. And ooh, level 32. Let's keep this going. No word on the sylph elder yet, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. In the meantime, how about doing a favor for old Buskaran in return? Right then, let's put you to work. There's a customer outside who's spoiling for a fight, and I need you to cool him off for me. No, no need to go cracking any skulls, though. Just take this tub of cold water and douse the junkard. Tends to do the trick. My patrons can swill grog all night and carouse loud enough to wake the dead if they wish, but as soon as it turns violent, I've got to put my boot down. So essentially, anything goes, but no fighting. You. Stop it. Ugh, Novica's tears, that's cold. What do you mean, no fight? This dust white scum was... Yeah, yeah, I know the rules. That bastard gets to keep his skin. Now. You know, I remember... A few years ago, <laughs> when going through this quest, you had to literally go to the riverside, right-click to drop the bucket, right-click again to fill the bucket up with water, and right to click the bucket, the uh, button again to pick up the bucket, and then come over to the guy and put the water on him. Now they just give you a bucket full of water. Such a time saver, I swear. Nicely done, Jay. I'll not have my patrons picking fights with each other over a bit of petty prejudice. In case you didn't see, the bloke who caught the brunt of that outburst is a dusk white elizin. There are people who shun cities to live in the wilds, making them no better than brigands in the eyes of many. To be fair, the Dusk Whites can be an unruly lot, but they ain't so bad once you get to know them. And they don't seem right to borrow a whole race of people from the Druthers for the misdeeds of a few. There should be at least one place where anyone willing to pay the coin and drink in peace is welcome, don't you think? Huh, I agree. I appreciate all the good you've done for our patrons. If you aren't disinclined, I have a favor to... I have a favor of my own to ask of you. There's a Keekern friend of mine, you see, the name of Tedarun. Good, a good lad. It was right after the calamity that I came across him fallen in the shroud. He nearly died in all the havoc, so I took him in and nursed him back to health best I could. He worked here at my druthers for a spell after that. Got to talking about striking out on his own, he did, and not long after cast his lot with a merchant bound for Lenosha. Well, it just so happens I got to cleaning up around here and came across something of his. This Scarlet's earring. I know he was fond of the ear of the thing, but he must have just forgotten it when he left. So I'd like to see that it gets to him. Can't say for sure where he ended up, but might be a friend of mine. A uh, Rogadin fellow named... Jeez, I hate Rogadin names. Bane Singh. Uh, there we go. That's his name. Boom. So... All right, fine, whatever. Basically, we gotta go all the way over back to Lenosha, most likely near Limsa to deliver this earring to his friend that he helped nurse back to health during or after the calamity. So let's head over to Lenosha and see what we can do. This particular part might be a bit lengthy. I'll try and speed this part up as best as I can.
just realized I could have teleported halfway over here instead of running all the way to the NPC I need to talk to. So there's his Rogadin friend that might have more info as to where Tedarun went to. You found your way to Arker's Alley, friend. Hmm? A teacher in what worked at the Druthers? Aye, you speak of Tedarun. Related to that Kyokyo Rune bloke just over by some um, blood or another. Two of them put together and we're making good coin, but old Tedarun up and left them so not long ago. Couldn't say as to why or where. You're better off asking Kyokyo Rune himself. He could be tight he could be tight of lip though. I warn you. Best take this chicken egg with you. Little bastards love the, the bloody things. Eh, good to hear about old Busk though. Sounds as though he ain't changed a bit. Just like extend the venture along, too shy to come his own self. God, I must drink with that dude. Alright, so Yo Kyorun, sir. Customer, be welcome. It's a customer? Not come with custom? Kyokarun busy with business. Too busy for blather. Wait, 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 wait. Here. I have an egg for you. I just need information. Chicken egg! Kyokarun love chicken egg. Love chicken egg more than love customer. Looking for Tedarun? Tedarun no here no more. Tedarun leave Limsa. Tedarun go look for Sparklies. Now working at now working at trading post. Good trading post. Forget where trading post is. Weinberg no Tedarun. Weinberg no trading post. Weinberg at Ferry Docks. You go to Ferry Docks. Kyokarun forget things. Weinberg remember things. You talk to Weinberg, not Kyokarun. Ah, uh, thanks. Weinberg, where are you at? You are over by the Fisherman's Guild. Let's go. What the fuck? I got pots on the barrel. Jeez. Is that the room? I, I seen him. That is to say, I saw him. He was headed somewhere up north by the way of Barry to Elk. By, by way of the ferry to Elport. Might as well head there and see what you can suss out. The skipper here can take you there. When you arrive, I'd start by asking Adel, but he's an old hand what knows a great deal about a great many things. All right, Elport it is, although I could have just teleported, but that's, that's fine. Ah, here you are. Tedarun? I I saw him. That is to say, I seen him. Oh, for fuck's sake, where is this man? He took himself north, through Skull Valley, into Oakwood. Was well, looking for a place to run by his fellow Keekern. I reckon he meant the one right on the shore of Bronze Lake. Remember Rune's trading post. Follow the road and you're sure to find it. So, map, please. Thank you. Alright, so, way up here. Okay, so... We'll be right back. Okay. We're here. We found him. Let's get this over with. Customer, be welcome. Not customer. Not come with custom. Bring something for Tedarun? Yes. Something you left behind a few years ago. Tedarun, forget this. Forget at Dreathers. Tedarun's store would never forget Earring, but he never forget forgot. Tedarun, thank. Tedarun, thank. Good Buskaran. G good Buskaran doing good? Good Buskaran, good to Tedarun? Tedarun miss good Buskaran. Oh god, he has a task for me. Oh lord, what do you want? Good Buskaran, help Tedarun. Tedarun dead without good Buskaran. Must give thankies. Many, many thankies. Tedarun make Kikran firewater for Buskaran. Buskaran love firewater. You help Tedarun make fire water? Need thingies to make. Need many, many thingies. Need Corel pup whiskers. Need three gold. Th need three good Corel pup whiskers. Alright. Let's get to it. Ugh. Oh, so far. Once this is all wrapped up, we'll get things rolling. Oh dear gosh. It's done. We found Tedarun, gave him the earring, but he wanted to 
uh, repay uh, Boost Karan for the stuff that he did for him when he was injured. So I had to help Tedarun gather ingredients to make a special drink to now I have to give to Boost Karan. That I now need to give to Boost Karan. I'm sorry, it's 10 o'clock and I'm tired. My brain ain't working too good right now. Ah, you've returned. Thank you for seeing Tedarun's belongings to him. Hmm, what's this? For me? Yeah, he calls it Pekron Firewater and says it's your favorite. Pekron Firewater. Oh, he remembers my fondest for the drink, does he? Why, that old he. I. Aw, oh, bloody hells. Who's cutting onions back there? He says to shove it for a year, does he? Aye, that sounds about right. I hate to have to wait, but I reckon it'll be worth it. This stuff has an aroma and body unlike any other drink I know. It's going to be a long year. What say you come back then, friend? We'll see if we can't make it through this bottle together. There was word while you were away. Silks were seen in the wood, but no, near no lands of their own. No, this is a place near to here. A place we've never known a silk to come. Something must have given them cause to venture this far. More than like, the missing silk elders among them. Here, I've marked the track where they were sighted on your map. Go see if there's anything to be seen. Ooh, got a lot of places to look at. to report that to Buscaron when I get back, but onward with the search. Oh, that player might need help. Alright, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh no, they're good. Why are you guys attacking me? I'm like a whole 10 levels above you. So this is a problem. Well, one, no sighting of the uh, Sylph Elder, but more importantly, there are Imperials kind of fucking close to like town and shit.
Yo, bus Karan, we have a problem. So, was well, there ought to be found in the wood? What did you come to? Garleans. Garleans? In this part of the Twelves Wood? Hmm, <laughs> first sylphs and now Garleans, and all in the same place. It cannot be mere coincidence. Might the Garleans be following the sylphs? Tracking them or giving chase, mayhap? But no, not this far into the forest. The whalers' spires are everywhere. Imperials could never have stolen past them all. How in the bloody hells could they... Unless... Unless someone guided them through. Someone who knew... Someone who knew where the spires stand and where the whalers watch. A Gridanian traitor. Ooh. I'm glad you've come, friend. There's something I want to talk to you about. You know I said I thought we might have a traitor in our midst? Someone as was aiding the Garleans? Well, I'm thinking I may have identified our suspect. There's a regular of mine who used to dine on thin soup and sip his pint on accounts for not being able to afford another. But of late, he's taken to ordering my best wines and the finest cuts of meat I can lay my hands on. Were he a merchant, I'd probably think nothing of it, but this lad's a wood whaler. And wood whalers don't earn that kind of coin. Not by chance, anyway. I was musing on where the money was coming from when you first told me about the Garleans in the forest, and I couldn't help put and I couldn't help putting two and two together. Suffice it to say, if the whaler is working for the Empire, none of us is safe. The lad I'm talking about goes by the name of Laurentius. Last I heard, he was in the South Shroud. Find him, Jay, and if he is up to no good, put an end to it. And him, if it comes to that. Whoa, will do. Alright, where can I find this guy at? Can you not see I am on patrol? Be gone. If you have business with the whalers, take it to the barracks. Ah, but sir, I have business with you. Hello, friend. Not long now. Hm. <laughs> to think patrol routes and rations would fetch such a price. No more than I deserve, though. It is little wonder the Empire has risen to such heights. If only the whalers paid their men paid men their worth. Y you What did you... How long have you... Help. Help. Help! Please, come quick, my friends. It is I, Laurentius. I am under attack. I'm sorry, who are you calling for? Holy shit. Motherfucker, did you just... Bruh, not cool. How? How did you... You just... I... I know nothing. I was on patrol. He just appeared. I... I thought you were working for the Garleans. Bitch, if you don't get your ass back here... There you are. Sir. How long do you mean to keep this up? What is it you, you imagine I've done? Enough. Enough, I say. It's... It's over then. I, I sold maps and rations to the Empire. It was I. I meant no harm. I only wanted the coin. The whalers are good. Strong. 
I was proud to join their ranks. Am proud. But they do not provide. They preach justice, honor, duty. But in the end, it is those with money who do as they will, who live as they will. Well, he's not lying there. So I sought an opportunity to change my fortunes and took it. All I've done, I've done for money. Endangered myself, my home, everything and everyone I love. Why? My actions have put your life in danger too. I'm sorry, come again. Though you do not yet realize how much. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Did you imagine that you had courted me? It is not I who was cornered. Garleans, I've brought the cure, bastard. Permit me a question, if you will. Are all adventurers so deluded as to believe they can challenge the power of, of Garlemald? He would need a veritable mountain of guilt to fund so such an endeavor. Such is the cost of fighting great power, or of making it, or of remaking it, as we will Gridania. So, that's the way of it. Swap your hard bunk at the barracks for a feather bed in Garlemald, did ya? You there, Hewer. You stand here at Old Busk's wish, no? Then you don't stand alone. Hey, back up. Thank you, friend. Alright. Let's go. Shit, wait, scratch that. We got more people. I got more reinforcements that pop. Possible. How did you best the Empire's finest, and with bandits and poachers at your side? They are your sworn enemies. Why do they fight with you and not against you? Ah, but I know the answer only too well. Buskaran. This is his doing. His words are wont to inspire men to act. Better men than I. Gods, what have I become? What have I done? I... I am sorry. No more will I pursue this folly. No more lies, no more bribes. I will go to the Order of the Twin Adder and confess my crimes. There is something I would like you to tell Buscaran. Tell him Laurentius, the fool, says, thank you. I feel as though a veil has been lifted from before my very eyes. Yeah, you done goofed, but... Yeah, you gotta face the consequences, sir. 
So, good luck with that. Whoa, let's get out of here, though. I want no parts of that. Stop attacking me! Laurentius confessed to his crimes. I just had word from the twin adder. Stacy marched straight into the nest and gave himself up. The lads had quite a life, you know. His mother was killed by a brigand when he was only small. As a young man, he joined the whalers, hoping to spare his fellow Gridanians the misery he'd known growing up. Trouble is, protecting Gridania is too big a job for one man, and he came to believe that he couldn't make a difference, that it was hopeless. There are few things more dangerous than the than desperation, and a man lost in the dark is easily drawn to the glimmer of coin. I reckon he thought that if he couldn't change the lots of his fellow man, he might as well change his own. Thing is, he was making a difference, just not on his own. Somehow he'd failed to grasp one simple truth, that those things we cannot do alone, we must do together. Hmm? He asked you to thank me, did he? Then there's good in him yet. I just hope that I just hope them at the adders that are able to see it. What he's done ain't an easy thing to forgive, but I'd like to think he'd be afforded a chance to make amends. But let us leave Fates to the Twelve. I have other news for you, Jay. The Sylph Elder has been found. <laughs> really? That is awesome. But that's gonna be for a another video. So, we finally found our Sylph Elder after doing a few other tasks here and there. I've unlocked one bit of side content called Palace of the Dead, but I'll probably go into more details with that in a separate video. As far as my class and job is concerned, I am no longer a gladiator. I've done the, I wouldn't call it an advancement quest, but I've done the quest, I've done the uh, quest needed to unlock Paladin. So my gladiator is no longer a gladiator. It is now a Paladin. So, yeah, I did learn one new skill from doing that, but, you know, as, as I level up, I'm gonna earn new skills and stuff, but just keep in mind that a paladin, a paladin is a tank class, so I'm most gonna be getting a lot of defensive stuff to keep me alive. But other than that, I'd say we've made a lot of good progress. In the next video, I do believe we'll be tackling a dungeon as well as rescuing the Sylph Elder. So, this should be a very exciting video. So thank you all for watching tonight. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.